in 2017, we pulled together, you helped folks viewing the channel and crowdfunded a little five window school bus for a gal named Tamara. And we have videos of that right here. Every once in a while we catch up with her and recently we did at Schoolie Palooza. Let's take a look. I see this is different. Yeah, someone gave Some this to me here, like last from, year before. at Schoolie Palooza. For the life of me, I can't remember who even gave it to me. Um, but I love it. Uh, it's a perfect little fit. Like, I don't even know if it was a re reveal or maybe it was like the first year update or something. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I got a lot of stuff. And I don't remember accumulating, but it happens, doesn't it? It does. I mean, sometimes you go through a period where you say, all right, I've accumulated a bunch of stuff. What I re yeah. what don't I really need that I've been carrying? Looks like you're at 13.1 on your power. So the solar is performing well. Yeah, it has held up and it surprises me, you know, because I did something stupid. I told you about it. We don't need to talk about it on film, but <laughs> I did do something stupid a couple of years or about a year ago or something. I thought maybe I wrecked my batteries, but they're still going strong. You know, uh, you just charge them up and yeah, it's not a problem. So you have a cool place to store your pine cones. That's important. <laughs> pine cone storage, you know, like every rig needs that. A lot of people are just willy nilly with their pine I cones. I know. But not you. No, <laughs> I've got to be doing organized with well. that. Yeah. Mind if I have a, you want to have Let's a seat? Let's say, yeah, have a seat. Please do. Everything in this bus probably has a story. I'm guessing this quilt is no different. It's not that great a story. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, I guess it kind of is because honestly, I was looking for something pretty much just like this. I wanted something orange and something that was colorful and something that had kind of like a 70s floral, like not psychedelic 70s, but like a muted 70s kind of thing. And I searched and searched and searched and then finally I found it online. And so that's basically the story, but I do love it. I think well, it's really I know good. that uh, you, have, you come from a really big family and they like to make things. And so there's probably some things around here that were made by oh, for family sure. members. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by family members? Start with the hat. <laughs> talk about the hat i don't what? think we've ever talked about your hat the one that's on the top right there. oh this yeah this one yeah. that i made yeah oh okay yeah no this is um felted wool and so um my friend rosemary who actually her and her husband are in a bus um, while they're building on their property but they were here earlier um and she raises sheep specifically for wool that's good for felting and she taught me how to felt so this is i've got my buns on but you get the idea it's a pretty sweet hat. So it's a primitive skill and you know, I'm into that. So, you know, using whatever the earth provides to make things that are beautiful and useful, like a hat. So, You're still doing primitive skills, teaching those classes? Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, 2020 things slowed down a bit, of course, but there were still opportunities, you know. I contract as an instructor with California Survival School and then also just work independently, kind of like, I don't really hustle or advertise, but just people hit me up and I just do, you know, different things. Like most recently, there was a homeschool co-op in Southern Utah that, um, you know, hit me up and said, hey, can you come? do some classes for us and so we went you know we did like thermal regulation and debris hut shelter building stuff like that so yeah we could like do a bus tour but we've done your bus tour it's and the same bus you could show the things that are different if you want why don't we, we instead talk about three and a half years in a school bus opposed to how it was before whatever that meant to you maybe some couch surfing maybe staying in some your car every here and there yeah yeah but now that you've been living this way this is kind of new for a lot of people and i know that you don't go out in the middle of nowhere by yourself you move through mainstream and cities and everything what's life been like for you i've been out on my own a lot uh, actually and and usually usually i'm from thing to thing and then just really happy for the time to go be out in the desert by myself in between you know mm. i only need a day or day or two to kind of recharge and be on my own but you know initially with uh, all of the uh, hysteria of last year you know, and ongoing, um, I kind of thought like, well, this isn't going to affect me because I don't really participate in conventional life. You know, I don't go out to eat. I don't go to the movies. I don't like retail shop or whatever. And I'm like, you know, my communities are all pretty like, you know, outdoors and like, um, unconventional anyway, you know, but gosh, several months in, I, man, I'll just, I'm just being honest with you. I had a breakdown seriously. Like, um, it just hit me. We are pack animals and we are not meant to be on our own that much. And I was just feeling, I'm, I'm a really independent person. I don't identify with loneliness very often, but I got so lonely. 
And um, just, you know, I think all of us just feel like the collective tension in the air, you mm -hmm. know, like there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of like contention between people, um, a lot of anger. And uh, and that I think that affects all of our mental health. I think, it you know, it can reach all of our psyche and stuff. And so it just requires us to be a lot more intentional. And Tell me a little out. bit about what that was like for you. Like walk me through what built up to that. Were you... For instance, you were out away from everybody and you called some friends and they said, oh, we can't meet up with you because of X, Y, Z or like what led yeah, up to that? No, you know, uh, I have a huge family, but several of us were going to get together in Austin at my brother's place. And then, you know, just one by one, everybody kind of dropped out. And so that wasn't happening. And then also the primitive skills gatherings that I typically like to attend, you know, half or most of those weren't happening. And then the nomad gatherings, you know, really, you know, wow. Uh, like the band build party, you know, wasn't happening. And then, you know, whatever else, uh, you know, descend on Ben and other get togethers where I depend on kind of con connecting with like-minded people. And then also I'm a church goer and, you know, church was obviously greatly affected by that. And so it was just like, and then I was in, I was in California for work and uh, parts of California are always a little tense culturally, no offense to anyone, you know, it's just my perception of it, but I, I think particularly tense now. And I was having, so I was there for work and work was great. I was enjoying that. But in the time between, it's impossible to find a place to park in the Bay area, you know, and there's signs and fences and people call the cops. And so it seemed like the few interactions I was having with other people were when they were telling me I wasn't wanted. Or, right. or in the grocery store, you're actually in someone else's energetic space, but no one's making eye contact. And there's like this, you know, anyway, so it just kind of built up and accumulated. And I was in Big Sur and for whatever reason, it just tipped, you know, like, and I just like, I'm like, I'm not good. I'm not okay. And that's not something that's normal for me. I'm in, I'm in a person with a full, a full spectrum of emotions, but like. But maybe it was appropriate and maybe it was good that. It welled up to a point that mm -hmm. it came to pass. Totally. Yeah. For sure. You know, I, I I always think it's great to express those things. And it was very cathartic. And also just for me to get a sense of how I'm doing. Because I kind of kept telling myself this narrative of like, I'm not that affected. And then I was like, no, I haven't. And I kind of started to calculate it. And like, of course I am. You know, like... Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I just made an extra effort to kind of connect virtually with my family, which is, you know, thank goodness we can do that, but it just isn't the same as being in someone's energetic space and people, right. and not only that, but people who know you, because when we spend too much time on our own, and this, I'm speaking for myself here, like in whatever way you're disordered and we all are as modern humans, right? Um, it's exacerbated in isolation and whatever thoughts you have that are distorted, when you don't have people who know you around you to kind of check that, they get out of control, you know? And so I just realized I need to be a lot more intentional about like where I'm going and like making sure I'm with people and, right. you know, uh, things like that. So, um, but yeah, so, but I learned a lot, obviously, you know, of like kind of the trials of, you know, our current, you know, age has kind of encouraged me to zoom out and get wider perspective and to like think about like, you know, nations rise and fall and like illnesses come and, you know, and generations, you know, people get sick, people die. And like, if I die, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> I don't want to. And there's a fine line between like healthy surrender versus apathy to where you're not even being responsible for it. And that's not what I'm saying. But just to have, just to be able to let go of what you can't control rather than be in that state of like, oh, this is so bad. Fear? What are we going to do? What's going to happen? Are you saying that you would rather perish than live your life in fear uh, you know i value life you know like i value living freedom it. yeah yeah i want to live my life i want to be in my body i want to be on this planet i want to be with people and i think um i absolutely believe in reasonable precautions of course i do you know i want to manage my health i want to be responsible for the effect i have on other people's health but health is so much bigger absolutely so you mind if i lighten the for sure yeah subject? sorry <laughs> All right, I, I'm just really dying to know as much as I can about what it's like to live in a five-window school bus, traveling in cities, and so you've been doing it for a few, a few years now. What's it like? Because I don't know. I just had a friend contact me this morning that's buying a vehicle, and they're saying, do I get a five-window bus like Tamara's, or do I get a transit or a pro master yeah pros and cons really and it's funny so what is it like living in a bus that looks like a school bus on the outside 
Do yeah. you get a lot of door knocks? I mean, I you're a, you're a pretty girl, so you come yeah. to the door and they see a pretty girl. They don't see somebody that looks like they're on their last leg or right. has mental problems. Right. So it's a it's a nuisance to get that knock in the middle of the night and be woken up. But typically, I mean, I've got a little privilege here, and like I don't. It's not that. It ain't bad once I open the door. Fortunately, you know. But they don't know who's inside exactly. before that. Exactly. What's that like? Do you? Do you, it can like, be scary. When like, you, how when do you, you predict, this is a door knock situation, I'm going to avoid it, or, like, tell me about that. Well, it depends on where you are. Sometimes you get to be more picky than other times, and sometimes you don't have a choice because you're dead tired and you don't know where else to go and you got to risk it. I try to stay out of cities, you know, for the most part. I can, I like to be in the city for a day or two, but then that energy starts to, like... Okay. You know, not be great for me, um, and so uh, you know, obviously, if I'm if I'm on you know BLM land or you know public lands or forest service or whatever, I don't get that knock, fortunately. But um, but yeah, there's great apps, of course, like iOverlander and Free Roam are the two that I use the most. You know, um, that show you places you can park, and that's a great way to avoid getting knocked on. But there are times when you're in the city and you're just you're in the city, um, and so. Uh, Do you spend most of your time in your home state? I don't have a home state. Okay. So what uh, so What I'm trying to do is guess maybe in California it's one way, but in Wyoming it's another way. I'm just trying you to know, get a feel for what it's like so, for you. So populated areas in California are rough right now in my experience. Like, as a matter of fact, I'm not doing it again, to be honest is with you. Is it law enforcement that makes contact or is it other, like, civilians that yes. you don't want to encounter? It's both. It's civilians calling the cops a lot of the time. Oh, so they see you parked there. Yeah. They're afraid that there's right. going to be trouble. Right. And so the law enforcement comes because yeah. they got a call. Well, and Kimmy and I talk about it and it's almost like, I mean, there there's no access to natural spaces there unless you're like, you know, paying for it. And it almost just seems like, you know, Kimmy says it really well, like, uh, you know, being in the, in natural spaces is kind of our birthright, but anymore it's become a commodity, you know, and particularly in some more affluent areas, it just feels like, we, why do you deserve to be here? You know? So, um, but for the most part, I'm fine, but I did have a harder time the, the last, uh, the last couple times I was in California. But if you're in Mount Shasta, if you're in Grass Valley, if you're in Nevada city, if you're, you know, um, in some of those areas, no problem that might be considered tourist towns. No, that are less populated. Okay. You know? So if you're in more and populated towns, people see your school bus, which it's obvious it's not a school bus that's still right. being used that way. And you're going to attract attention what would you say half the time? I'm really, I know I'm really staying on this topic, sure. but it just, it, it's something I've really been curious about. Yeah. So like 50, 50, if you park in a grocery store parking lot for more than a couple hours, you're going to have a knock or where are the places that I get knocked usually? Um, yeah. Occasionally in a grocery store parking lot. Oh, let me think back to, you know, trailheads and stuff in California. I was getting knocked on, on trailheads, places in other, in other areas where I wouldn't get knocked on. By, uh, Rangers and stuff? I had a ranger once, but usually cops, you know. At a trailhead. Yeah, at trailheads and stuff. Um, so, yeah. And there's just a lot of signage and, and um, gates and stuff in in that in that part of California. They say no school buses? Or <laughs> Basically, I mean, like no it feels... No camping or something? No, no overnight parking. So no And I got a $50 parking. ticket for sleeping, you know, a couple months ago, which sucks. That was just alongside the one. Did they catch you sleeping? I was... Oh, yeah, I was asleep, I think. Because I have a friend. That no, got... I was awake, but I didn't um, catch him in time. Cammie scooted out before, you know, she, like, started her engine. Mm, so they but if you're not sleeping, one. I have a friend who had, a, like, a Prius who went up on the very top of a carport in Las Vegas. And the he got called on from the, somebody to come, you know, approach him mm -hmm. and say, you're not supposed to sleep here. And he said, I was meditating. <laughs> there you go. I'm up here meditating. I love that. Well, you know, I've heard that there is more lenience since COVID because some people are displaced, you know, there's yeah. some, and the, with the fires and stuff like that. And so I'd heard that there was some leniency. And so maybe, you know, maybe it was better than it would have been otherwise. And like I said, there were spots where that were great and where I didn't have any trouble at all. Like um, north of like Davenport, north of Santa Cruz, you know, like uh, there's a great spot there I didn't get messed with. And like. So you use Orlander? Um, yeah, them. for sure. And I was at Stinson Beach that, you know, I didn't get messed with at all. Great spots. North of Stinson Beach, or I mean, south of Stinson, Stinson Beach, I got knocked on. That was a ranger. Um, anyway, so, you know, but it's, unfortunately, it's part of the course. But honestly, 
It's worth it. It's still a good trade. You it's don't a feel like it's you're a sore thumb and you're burdened with all, all this unwanted attention. You know, it's it, like I said, it got to me when I was already in a bad state of mind. Okay. You know that it, it was it was one aspect and one factor in me really <laughs> kind of falling apart. You know, it was one of the exacerbating factors. You know, of just feeling because for me, like you know, if, I'm sorry. Shoot. It's okay. Like. For me, like, you know, to, like, get personal, that that is one of my, like, distorted thoughts is, like, I'm not wanted, you know, like, um, just feeling, I don't know. And so not having, again, community around me to bounce that off of and to, like, ha to, like bring me back to reality and then getting, feeling so rejected and, like, feeling like a pariah, it started to get to me, you know. But in general, I mean, it sucks. I'd prefer it wasn't like that. But in general, the lifestyle is still worth it. You know, mm -hmm. so, I mean, also gas mileage is a, you know, a bit of a thorn in my side, but, uh, but it, it's more, it's still more than worth it, you know? And so, and, you know, for a lot of people, buses have a lot of mechanical issues. I don't have that. Like you pick the winner, like, well, let's talk a little bit about your bus. Uh, it's a five window on a van chassis rather than a commercial Chevy express 2006 drives like a van. It doesn't drive like a commercial vehicle. I can go up to 90. I mean, you, I, and I it's don't. probably got a governor on it that stops, stops at 90. At 90. It'll probably exactly. go faster than that. Exactly. This motor is a beast. It's a 6.0. Yeah. Uh, absolute beast. Yeah. I was absolutely thrilled <laughs> when I ran across this. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so driving it is not difficult for you at all. No, no. I mean, there was a learning curve. Like the first time when I picked it up, drove it from Salt Lake to San Francisco. When I got there, I was like, you know, like my shoulders hurt or whatever. Yeah. But um, but after that, I mean, I'm broken in. You know, like. Yeah, I have, I'm not anxious about driving it at all. And, uh, you know, it goes a lot of places. I mean, it's not four wheel drive and it doesn't have the best clearance in the world. But as you know, I've taken it some places I probably shouldn't like. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. And I had a big day on getting, helping you get out of there. Yeah, Jamie moved rocks for me for like a few days. Freaking rocks like this big. <laughs> In Baja, so uh, like, and Cammy, her van got down there. She's like, "Tam, you can do it. You can do it." And I was like, "I don't think I should." And like, I shouldn't have. But I loved being there at that beach. It was. Worth you got it. there, and then you go, "Hey, will you drive out for me?" And I'm all, "No." <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> yes, but you were also like, "Okay, that's," one. and that yeah. helped tremendously to have. And plus, maybe the rocks and stuff. So, yeah, it was worth it. But the the place that gets banged up is like uh, the uh, stairwell, because that's the mine does too. Point. We were gonna circle back to putting in curtains and we never got around to it and you have not put curtains in why don't you want curtains in your rig i was hoping you wouldn't notice that it is pure procrastination to be honest with you oh well i would argue if it bothered you that much you'd that's have something the thing in the windows is, if it ain't broke don't fix it the reflect so i have reflectix that i roll out you know okay. and that's easy and um you know it would probably look better for those you know for the neighbors you know who might be anxious it would probably look better to have curtains rather than reflectix but right the reflectix do the trick and so, you know, meets the need of privacy and, you know, a little bit of insulation and blocking the light out. And so, um, but I will get curtains up at some point. I will. It's up to you. Yeah. Hey, we're trying to film in here. What's going on out there? <laughs> hey! <laughs> What's up, man? Messing with you. <laughs> How's it going, Andy? Doing good. How you guys doing? Pretty good, pretty good. We're almost done. Right on. It's a nice ambiance, though. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you can keep doing it if you want. We'll just use it as our outro. Yeah. <laughs> So, hey. <laughs> How you doing? I'm That's Andy. Good. That's Andy. He's the mayor of this neighborhood. <laughs> so, yeah. They deem me the mayor this week. Yeah, we've been a the crew. Walking with a W. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> we've been a like, crew yeah, for. Put that in a, like, uh, uh, New York accent. Oh, right, because Danny. Yeah. 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 There you go. So, so cheers. Yeah. Anyway. Good to see you. Yeah. yeah. Good to see you. Bus is beautiful. So beautiful. So, you've got Reflectix if you need them. Exactly. But. You're not like hurry. I don't see them out, so it looks like it's not like you want to hurry up and put them in. Honestly, every day. I have them. Yep. Yeah. Right okay, thank you. The sun sets beautiful. Maybe this is a good time for us to wrap it up. What else would you like to add? This is our, I don't know, third or fourth time we've gotten back together to visit about your experiences since uh, you moved into the bus. Yeah. Um, you know, three and a half years have gone so fast. I cannot believe it's been three and a half years. Like it has, right? It was July 2017 that you handed over the keys. What's this? Yeah. 21. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, yeah. And I've been on the road five and a half years, which blows my mind. And um, 
life is good, you know, uh, it's ups and downs and, you know, um, but whenever I forget I'm lucky and whenever I start to complain and whenever I don't, I'm not connected to gratitude. Um, I just reflect on like this container, you know what I mean? Like my living space, my home is proof that I am so blessed, you know, and that I am so lucky and that I live, <laughs> that I live a really good life, sorry, that I live a really good life, you know? And like, I'm happy to, I don't know, I'm happy to be on the planet and I was happy to be on the planet before, but it's such an enhancement and, um, yeah, and it helps me connect with other people and, um, and everybody loves it. Everyone enjoys the space. You know, you're here at Schooly Palooza. Some of these builds are like so high tech and pro, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So professional, but like, and I love it and I'm impressed with it, but this build and everybody says so, and I feel the same way. This build is so me, you know? Well, I'm glad to hear that. And this build is a little bit different in the, in the, huge it wasn't me that did this a huge community of people yeah. all pitched in to do yeah. this for you yeah. those guys they saved up their money maybe they had their parents chip in however it worked yeah. out yeah maybe they earned every penny of it or whatever but this is all these people wanted you to have this yeah I, dozens if not hundreds i know it's i still don't know how to process that seriously yeah. like i still don't even know how to digest that. well riddle me that next time you're yes. thinking that you're not wanted Serious. yeah because you. you can just go i was wanted right there i was wanted no, right there it's I was true right there. I was you know right there. it's it's a thing that cognitively you know the, and we all have these things where cognitively intellectually you know it's not true but there's some deep rooted like from your formative years foundational like false beliefs or whatever but you're absolutely right you know like all i have to do is look around and be like i am well loved you know and um and then reminds me of like there are people who don't feel well loved you know and like i've got so much love that i've received you know and like to look out for those people and to spread that around and and that's what we need right now that's what we need right now is to just look out for each other you know i see i see an agenda to make us as as a species, not a, let alone a nation, um, distracted, divided, and afraid. And my rebellion is to love and trust my neighbor. And um, and I'm wary of anyone who invites me to do otherwise. Um, but I'm determined to love and trust my neighbor. I don't think that we could end on any better note than that. I just want to communicate to you. This is something that I've I've thought about a lot, but I've never I haven't said recently. I really. I mean, I don't know. Let me think. I don't know if I can put into words how much I appreciate that you didn't sell this and go do something oh, else. Oh, it's that you're never still been it. a thought, Jamie. Seriously. And that doesn't mean you can't someday. But I, I think about I don't doing know. these and I think about appreciation <laughs> levels. Yeah. And the fact that you're still totally digging this. I can't think just of what reinforces... circumstances would, would get me out of this rig. Seriously, I'm so satisfied and content with it, you know? And like, and, and I always just feel like I want you to be pleased with what I've done with it. I want your viewers to be pleased with what I've done with it, you know? I still... Well, the people that chipped in. Absolutely, absolutely. And like, even knowing you were doing this, like, I would have loved to have like really, really cleaned, you know what I mean? But you have to sub submit to the mm, dust. I think it's pretty clean dust. and it's but also like, kind of a, like, this is how we roll. This is how we live, exactly, you know? But like, um, but yeah, I'm pleased that you're pleased and I hope you're just absolutely thrilled. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it still brings joy um, to all the people that contributed, you know, when they think about it. So, well, seeing this, I think it will Yeah. because you're still in it, using it, appreciating it. It works. And folks can see like Robin right there. There's the Robin fridge. Barnes. Robin. <laughs> Thank you, Robin Barnes. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Jack's also in the stovetop over there. Yeah. I mean, you can just look around and, and uh, mention and the names. Ben Wampler here, you know, um, with the solar controller and, you know, and then people whose names I can't even remember, you know, because there's so many of them. And mm. like people, I've said it before, but people always say, well, it feels just there's good energy in here. And I'm like, that's because it's made up of so many different people's generosity and heart and contribution and offering and gift, you know, and you can feel it energetically, you know, so. We're uh, making you miss the sunset. Thanks for taking time. There is some live music us. down there. There's going to be an accordion, a piano, like some strings, instruments. Um, I dig that. Everybody's having fun in the face of everything going on in the news. You know, all is well. All is well. Thank you so much. Jamie, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you all so much. And